In the Disney era of Star Wars, Andor is the one show that truly stands out. Whether or not you love it, you can't deny that it distinguished itself from the other Disney Plus productions. It understood what Star Wars really is, a vast setting where many different stories can be told. Much like Warhammer, The World of Darkness, or Cyberpunk, Star Wars offers a universe for exploring any genre. So when Andor creator Tony Gilroy set out to produce a political spy thriller within the Star Wars universe, he must have known that it was more than possible. There have been other Star Wars creators who claim to be trying something different, to be telling a story within a genre that Star Wars hasn't done before. There have also been other Star Wars creators who claim that one of their favorite characters within the setting is Kreia. Now I don't know if Tony Gilroy even knows who that is. Perhaps it was just a character writing coincidence due to themes being explored and the necessity of such a character. But it was Mr. Gilroy who gave us an original character that captured the essence of Kreia. Kreia and Luthen Ryle are the same side of the same coin. Comparable to Kreia and Ulysses from Fallout New Vegas, arguably the same characters but molded differently from their environments. It also helps that Stellan Skarsgård is a phenomenal actor. The show is filled with extraordinary performances, but one that's very special to me is Genevieve O'Reilly. She's been playing Mon Mothman for years, but now, finally, she was given a script worthy of her talent. She was amazing. But I digress. Both Luton and Kreia have their respective goals. Both goals involve neutralizing a power much larger than themselves. To accomplish this, they go about doing very similar things. It's just that one has force powers and the other does not. But you use what you have at your disposal. To Kreia, force powers are much like a lightsaber or any other weapon, a tool. I use it as I would use a poison and in the hopes of understanding it, I will learn the way to kill it. A lightsaber, any weapon, only achieves worth in how it is wielded, in the effort, in the struggle of one who holds it. As a non-force user, Luthen can rely only on himself to do similar things that Kreia can use the force for. They both need to hide in plain sight. Kreia can use abilities like Force Cloak if necessary. There are techniques in the force where one can cloud the memory of others, make their presence so small as to be unnoticed. Luthen has to do it the old-fashioned way. He has to change his clothes, his speech, his mannerisms. The Clark Kent to his Kal-El slash Superman. The Bruce Wayne to his Batman. They both understand that information is power and the foundation for proper manipulation. You are a crude thing, murderer, but you have your uses. You know how important this woman we travel with is. Even one such as you can feel it. You will serve her until I release you. Your everything seemed to be all about bringing in a savior to access your family funds. Manipulation is Kreia's and Luthen's strongest weapon, and Andor consistently demonstrates how effective it can be. The Dhanis, they're simple people. They breed a sad combination of traits that make them particularly vulnerable to manipulation. Would you like us to clear the room? No. I want her to see him. What are you doing? Get him out of here. Quickly. I've learned from Palpatine. I show you the stone in my hand. You miss the knife at your throat. You can say that Kreia is the superior manipulator, and I would agree. But you can argue that perhaps it was Kreia's vast experiences with the Force that developed their skills to that degree. But even at such a superhuman level, both Kreia and Luthen understand that you can only plan for so much, and then it's out of your hands. Something that Luthen's partner, whose name just so happens to be Clea reminds him of. There's nothing else you can do, Luthen. It's never going to be perfect. I wanted it too much. Plans are fragile things, and life often dashes expectations to the ground. After the Eldani heist, we get one of, if not the best written scene in the entire show. But also the first time that Luthen goes full on Kreia incarnate. Mon Mothra goes to confront Luthen under the suspicion that he's behind the Aldani raid. Luthen does a little tap dance in an effort to keep the secret, but I think he wants her to know. Wipe the smile off your face. The genius of this comes from the Aldani heist killing two birds with one stone. They need funding, now they have funding, even if Mon Mothma hadn't run into banking issues. We need every credit we can get our hands on. They also needed personnel. They needed people to firmly align themselves against the Empire. 
They didn't only need every credit they could get their hands on, they also needed as many dissidents as they could get, and that's what Aldani is going to provide. If the Empire is one thing, it's predictable in how it responds to said dissidents. It cracks down hard to an excessive degree. Like I said in the previous Crash Conundrums, I think you'd be surprised by what people can get used to, which is why Luthen goes out of his way to make people suffer even more. We need the fear. We need them to overreact. The Empire has been choking us so slowly we're starting not to notice. People will suffer. That's the plan. ISB supervisor Dedra Mira was able to see this truth. We're playing straight into their hands. Whose hands? The rebels. This is exactly what they want. But when the head of your government is a Sith Lord, there's really no avoiding it. Victory to them hinges upon domination. How many sorts of victories can you imagine? Peaceful victory, victory by sacrifice, a truce, an achievement. Unless the victory is achieved by demonstrating that your power is superior, it is only an illusion, temporary at best. In the end, it works even better than Luthen had hoped. Andor gets caught in it, being sent to forever prison, essentially enslaved for no reason. A prison that had him doing the same thing he witnessed in the war, the Empire making people fight amongst themselves, unable to be with his mother as she died because of it, and in the end, breaking someone even as jaded as Andor, eliminating the need to kill him. Kill me. Or take me in. It is a far greater victory to make another see through your eyes than to close theirs forever. Despite fighting for the same goal, we see the stark difference between Luthen Ryle and Mon Mothma. Mon is naive and still thinks that some things can still be done within the parameters of the law. That perhaps she can avoid becoming what the Empire would label Luthen as, a terrorist. Luthen, meanwhile, no longer concerns himself with labels, the law, or morality. You weaken yourself by pretending that morality is important to you. Especially for a non-Force user, these are the steps you would have to take in order to stand a chance against what they're really fighting but are unaware of, a Sith Lord on top of an Empire. If you're not willing to risk your conscience, then surrender and be done with it. We couldn't see if it was there for Kreia, but taking the stance of abandoning your morality isn't exactly easy for Luthen. You can see it in his eyes something he goes on to make abundantly clear. And what do you sacrifice? Calm. Kindness, kinship. Love. Kreia's fight is with a near omniscient entity, an entity that flows through your very cells, waiting for any chance to influence your thoughts and actions. She can't afford to lose focus, even for a moment, or it might seep into her mind. This entity can use others to achieve the same thing, so Kreia has to push everyone away. Use their dependency, feed upon it, until you have exhausted them. Then leave them. I've given up all chance at inner peace. I made my mind a sunless space. Is it possible to have inner peace while simultaneously being constantly vigilant and on guard? for metaphysical manipulation attempts? Or knowing of all the terrible things you've done and still have to do? What do you wish to hear? That I once believed in the Code of the Jedi? That I felt the call of the Sith? That perhaps once I held the galaxy by its throat? That for every good work that I did, I brought equal harm upon the galaxy? That perhaps what the greatest of the Sith Lords knew of evil they learned from me? I share my dreams with ghosts. Even now she is difficult to see. She must remain hidden for now until the time is right. If not, then all our efforts will be for nothing. I wake up every day to an equation I wrote 15 years ago from which there's only one conclusion. I'm damned for what I do. My anger, my ego, my unwillingness to yield, my, my eagerness to fight. They've set me on a path from which there's no escape. And controlling it. Well, I do not believe such a thing is possible once it has begun. I yearn to be a savior against injustice without contemplating the cost, and by the time I looked down, there was no longer any ground beneath my feet. I was cast down and fell into darkness. I'm condemned to use the tools of my enemy to defeat them. But perhaps these are the excuses of an old woman who has grown to rely on a thing she despises. Kreia, Luthen, and the ISB 
are all the same. They are all willing to do the same things for different reasons. They all have to manipulate on a grand scale. They all have to be opportunistic, even if it means throwing other people to the wolves. We've got a rebel pilot in custody, one of Anto Krieger's group. What if we foul the ship? An accident, something mechanical. Have the pilot found dead in the cockpit. What better way to reassure the ISB there's no leak in security than sacrificing Krieger? Colonel Tobin, I am with Vaklu. The war has gone against him. He sent me to rescue you, to tell you you must make haste off planet. The Jedi have struck. They had a secret academy buried on Telos, and they are showing themselves at last. I burn my decency for someone else's future. I burn my life to make a sunrise that I know I'll never see. By killing me here, you have rewarded me more than you can possibly know. Even beyond the fact that we never see the character Luthen Ryle in any of the Star Wars stories that chronologically follow Andor, I don't think there's any path where Luthen comes out of this alive, and he's well aware of that. Kreia also knew that no matter what, this story needs to end with her death. Now the ego that started this fight will never have a, a mirror or an audience or, or the light of gratitude. Instead, the wider Star Wars fan base, if they even know about Kreia, just writes her off as some crazy old Sith lady. In universe, no one would ever know what she did or try to do for them. But someone had to do it. So what do I sacrifice? Everything! The bottom line is this. Whether it's the Galactic Empire or the Force, someone is eventually going to say, enough is enough. We can't keep living under this thing that has us constantly and senselessly killing each other. Someone is going to have to make the difficult decisions and do the reprehensible things that would be required in order to change this status quo. And in KOTOR 2, that person was Kreia. And during the reign of the Empire, it was Luthen Ryle. In the media, rebellions are often glorified and treated as if they were wholly benevolent, righteous, and filled with nothing but heroes. But we know that's not the truth. There are revolutions that I'm sure most of us would agree that the stated goals were noble. But we can't deny that there were people involved with them that did things that we might consider unforgivable. And not necessarily because they wanted to do these things. That's who Kreia and Luthen are. The ones who make the soul-crushing decisions. The ones who manipulate and are forced to face morality for what it is. The ones who do the most important work but remain in obscurity. The ones who bear this weight so that others might live in freedom. There must always be a Darth Treya, one that holds the knowledge of betrayal who has been betrayed in their heart and will betray in turn. Freedom is a pure idea. Tyranny requires constant effort. For Luthen, the obscurity is especially crucial. If it gets out that a founding member of the rebellion did things that directly had a hand in making people's lives more miserable, the entire New Republic could come crashing down. You have Kreia advocating for and doing things that would widely be considered dark side. But where would the exile be without her? You have Luthen Ryle advocating for and doing things that would be considered dark side. But where would Luke Skywalker be without him? Kreia and Luthen are the same side of the same coin.